This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's purer than finest Castile. Well, it's Tuesday night again. Time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, Jimmy Cash, and Paul Whiteman and his music. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, this is the Burns' first morning back home after a brief visit to the east. And George is still sound asleep upstairs, peacefully unaware that at this moment a meeting is going on in his living room. Yes, you guessed it. It's that splendid organization whose very name is enough to give George the horrors, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Now, I'm glad 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 I'm it's time for the meeting. Oh, but Gracie, we want to hear some more about New York. Yes, it must be such a fascinating place. Oh, well, New York is just a city, girls, exactly like Los Angeles. Only New York grew up and Los Angeles grew sideways, that's all. <laughs> Gracie, maybe you'd better open up the meeting. It's getting late. Oh, yeah, of course, Gracie. All right. Uh, ladies of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society, you may now consider yourselves opened up. <laughs> um, girls, while I was away, Vicki Gluskin took the minutes of the last meeting And I think we all owe her a round of applause for her splendid work Girls, a big hand for Vicki Gluskin <laughs> All right, that's enough, Vicki <laughs> Um, I'll proceed with the minutes <clears throat> The, um, the last meeting of the Beverly Hills Upper Society Was to have been held at the home of Mrs. Millie Taylor But when her husband heard the news he raised several objections at a floor lamp. <laughs> however, however, the incident ended harmlessly when Mrs. Taylor grabbed it out of his hand and knocked out three of his front teeth with it. <laughs> My husband has a perfectly vicious temper. He certainly has. Yes, Millie. I'm afraid that someday he'll get really mad at you and you'll kill him. <laughs> Gracie, go ahead with a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, we then decided to hold a meeting at the home of Mrs. George Burns, who was away in the east. So we entered through a second-story window. It was such fun, Gracie. I hadn't shinnied up a drain pipe since I was a little girl. Really, Blanche? Yes, and that was easily ten years ago. Oh, easily. <laughs> well, to continue, the meeting was declared open by Mrs. Bagley, who wore the same old Kelly Green dress and a fascinator that obviously wasn't working. <laughs> oh, really, Vicky? You shouldn't let personalities creep into the minutes. Well, I'm sorry, Gracie. Well, you ought to be. There's no need to say things like that about our members. They know how badly they dress. Well, I didn't mean oh, it. Oh, oh, my, there's the door. Excuse me, girls. Yes, oh, right there. There. oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Gosh, it's wonderful to see you again. Oh, did you really miss me? I should say I did. I missed your sparkling wit and your madcap gaiety, which is so similar to my own. Oh, 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 you're sweet. Honestly, I haven't had a good laugh since you left. May I have one now? Well, of course. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel better. Oh. Well, did you ever make a trip to New York, Mr. Postman? No, but I do correspond with a man who lives there, a Mr. Charles Atlas. He gives a course in bodybuilding. Oh. And uh, you take it? Oh, no. I just write in and give him helpful hints. <laughs> My body doesn't need improvement. It would be gilding the lily. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I just forgot how strong you are. No offense, Mrs. Burns. This uniform hides my physique. But in the gymnasium, all my friends say that I'm built like a brick chimney. <laughs> Sure you are. Well, here's your mail, Mrs. Burns. A little package from New York. Oh, a package? Oh, good. I'm so glad it came in time for the meeting. Goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. And remember, keep smiling. <laughs> yes, Come back to water, girls. Come back to water. Now, in a little while, I'll have a surprise for you. But first, we'd better get on with the meeting. Is there any old business? Yes, Gracie. We still haven't decided on the official club flower for us girls to wear. And we haven't decided on our official club greeting either. Well, girls, I had a marvelous idea about that. We can combine both of them. Really, Gracie? How? Well, now, for the club flower, we can wear goldenrod. 
And for the club greeting, we can sneeze at each other. <laughs> oh, I think that's splendid. Don't you, girls? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know I was interrupting a meeting. Oh, it's all right, Bill. Girls, you all remember Bill Goodwin? <laughs> Gracie, look, don't ever have Charles Boyer over here. You know, if they do that for me, for him, they'd blow the walls down. <laughs> well, I really came over to see George. Where is he, Gracie? Oh, he's still in bed, Bill. You see, he couldn't get any sleep on the train last night. He just laughed all night long. He laughed? Yes, he shared his birth with my darling little duck. And you know how ticklish George is. <laughs> Yes, Grace. Well, I'll, I'll go wake him up. Oh, now that you're here, Mr. Goodwin, we simply must take advantage of this opportunity. Must we? Yes. We know that you and Tootsie were in New York together, and we're dying to know whether you two lovebirds became more intimate. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Tootsie. I hardly saw you in New York, except when I happened to pass in front of the YMCA. <laughs> But you gave me a cake for my birthday, Bill. Well, Tootsie, I give all my friends a cake for their birthday. See, it's a wonderful soap, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir, there's nothing like a cake of swan, the new white floating soap. It's purer than finest Castiles and a regular suds and whiz. Bill, I've got a new use for swan soap. You have, Tootsie? Uh-huh. I put it under my pillow so I'll dream of you. Oh. <laughs> well, gee, thanks, Tootsie. You know, um... I dreamed about you last night. Really? Oh, yes. I dreamed that you were Mrs. Goodwin. Oh, oh how wonderful. And Bill, what were we doing? Washing the dishes with swan. <laughs> oh. Uh, but I was Mrs. Goodwin, huh? Oh, yes, Tootsie. You were Mrs. Goodwin. You were washing the dishes, and I put my arms around you, and I said, Let me help you, Mother. <laughs> Well, well, sure. And you said, no, son, with swan in the dishpan, I don't need any help. Tests show that swan suds faster than other white floating soaps, and it's so mild. And just look how it helps keep my hands soft and lovely. And I said, that's right, Mom. Use swan for every soap and water job around the house. Oh, Bill, how could you dream that I was your mother? Well, I'll tell you, you remind me of her a lot, Tootsie. The way your eyes light up when you break a bar of swan in two. The way you walk as you put half of it in the kitchen for dishes and cleaning and the other half in the bathroom for your hands and face, tub or shower. Uh, well, goodbye, girl. Oh, wait, Bill. You said I remind you of your mother. Well, don't you always kiss your mother goodbye? Oh, sure I do. <laughs> well? Well, Tootsie, see me Mother's Day. <laughs> so long, girl. Goodbye, goodbye girl. George. Hey, George. Oh, hello, Bill. I was just coming down. Oh, gee, what a great sleep I had. Ah, home sweet home. Yeah. Gracie probably has a wonderful breakfast all fixed. Come on, have a cup of coffee with us, Bill. Uh, George, I wouldn't go in there. Let's have a cup of coffee at the drugstore. Oh, huh? not me, Bill. It's too noisy and crowded down there. I like peace and quiet. Uh, George, don't go in there. Why not? It's my own little home. My own little love nest. Come on, Bill. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Paul White. Here's a song you've heard before and you'll hear again. So the right title for it is I've Heard That Song Before.
Gracie, this is fine. After all I've said, our very first day home, you invite those idiotic women here again. George, I've asked you a thousand times not to call them idiots. And I've asked you a thousand times not to invite them here. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's compromise. You let me invite them here, and I'll let you call them idiots. <laughs> well, I'm at the end of my rope. I've tried arguing with you, threatening you, pleading with you, even bribing you. I don't know what else to do. Well, let me see now. Why, it is difficult to think of anything, isn't it? Yeah. H have you tried beating me? No. Ah, oh, you see? You're always ready to give up. Yeah, but beating you is one thing I can't do. How do you know? I'm not as strong as I look. <laughs> okay, I know when I'm licked. I'm done. Finished through. Ah, oh, that's the old spirit. Now you're talking that a boy. <laughs> Gracie, won't you please give up that club? Oh, if you only knew the girls better, you wouldn't ask me to do that, dear. Why, do you know that they're waiting for me to come back right now so they can give me a medal? They're going to give you a medal? Mm-hmm. To commemorate my concert in Carnegie Hall last week. Uh, who, uh, who thought that up? One of the very women you were just saying all those nasty things about. Who? Me. <laughs> Well, that's very sweet of you, giving yourself a medal. I know, but I deserve it. Oh, oh sure, 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 sure. I, I made musical history when I played the piano in Carnegie Hall. Why, one critic said I was as good as Post. As good as, as, as who? Post. He said I played with all the depth and feeling of a Post. <laughs> oh, yeah, great musician, that Post. Mm -hmm. I Tall, would... skinny fella. Well, I don't know it. No I well. wish you'd come in with me and watch the ceremony, George. The postman just brought the medal, and it's simply beautiful. It's got a picture of me on one side and a picture of a fish on the other. A fish? Yes. Well, you see, I figured out that I played the scale 196 times in Carnegie Hall last week. And, well, if you count the scales on the fish... I get it. I get find... it. You don't have to finish it. I yeah. see the whole thing. Well, will, will you come in with me and listen to the presentation speech, dear? Well, why not? I might as well be good and miserable. Yes, I can win. Um, girls, girls, I took the liberty of bringing my husband back into the meeting with me. Um, all those in favor of making him our guest of honor will please say aye. Uh, all those in favor of just making him a guest, please say aye. Uh, oh, all those in favor of not throwing him out, please say aye. <laughs> Hi, sit down. Uh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> and uh, now, girls, it's time for my surprise. The presentation of the Gracie Allen Memorial Achievement Award. What else are you doing? Well, it's, um, it's a medal which will be given each year to the member who has done most to make our club famous. <laughs> now, um, I'm the first winner because I not only made a recent contribution to musical history, but I also bought a medal. Oh, Bella, I bet that But who knows what the future may hold. Next year, Frances Fowler might win it with those new false eyelashes she invented. Oh, well, they're really nothing, Gracie. Why, I think they're clever. You should see them, George. They have 48 hairs, and when you go to the market, you pull one hair out for every ration point. <laughs> then, when your eyelashes are all gone, you, you stop buying. Yeah. I thought that that's, 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 that's very clever. I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, who'd like to make the presentation speech? How about you, Clara? Oh, uh, uh, Gracie, I, I simply couldn't. I, I've never made a speech. Well, it won't be hard. All you have to do is read what I wrote. You you wrote the speech yourself. Thank Every you. word of it. Here you are, Clara. Go ahead. <clears throat> Ladies of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society, it is my privilege to pay a greatly deserved honor to our most talented and illustrious member. Oh, please. Oh, no. <laughs> No artist of our time has done more to further the cause of music than this charming and lovely young woman. Oh, my goodness, you're making me blush. <laughs> Her accomplishments have thrilled the nation, yet through it all, she has remained modest and, um, uh, oh, what's this word, Gracie? Oh, let's see. Oh, unassuming. Oh, thanks. She has remained modest and unassuming. Oh, and don't think it's been easy. Oh, no. <laughs> So I take pleasure in presenting the Gracie Allen Memorial Achievement Award to Gracie Allen. Oh, yeah. Well, girls, I, I just don't know what to say. Your wonderful tribute has caught me completely unprepared. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, I've had all I can stand. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> well, so help me if something isn't done to get those buzzards out of my hair. Well, brother, I'm... they've really got you talking to yourself. They certainly have, Bill. I'm going nuts. That club is making an old man out of me before my time. Oh, now, George, why get so excited about a few months? <laughs> Well, no fooling, Bill. If Gracie doesn't get rid of that club, it's going to ruin my health. Say, wait a minute. George, if you pretend you're ill, maybe she'll throw him out. Oh, she'd know it was a phony. Well, she wouldn't if her own doctor told her you were sick. You mean that Dr. Lewis, that absent-minded crackpot? Well, now, wait. Gracie thinks he's a great doctor, even though in his case the MD does stand for mentally deficient. Mm. <laughs> now, you get him to tell her the club is ruining your health, and that's the end of it. Bill, you're wonderful. I love you. I could kiss you for this. Oh, George, please remember, you're a married man. Oh, how could I forget? <laughs> Jimmy Cash has got the right thought about any loose talk you might hear around these days. I don't believe in rumors. Okay, Jimmy, we'll go right ahead. It's a dangerous thing to repeat what you hear When you don't even know what they're saying is true Somebody else told somebody else And that somebody said we were through but I don't believe in rumors, darling I want it straight from you Wherever I walk, the people all talk And they're saying it's time that I knew But I don't believe in rumors, darling I want it straight from you for everyone knows how a rumor grows When the gossips are doing their work But somehow I feel if the stories were real You would have come to me first Whatever they say and say what they may Still it isn't a thing you would do Oh, I won't believe in rumors, darling. I want it straight from you. Keeping that screwball, Dr. Lewis. I phoned him an hour ago. Now, stop worrying. He'll get here, and when he does, you'll be a free man. Bill, if this idea works, I'll owe you a big favor. Just name the thing you want most, and I'll get it for you. Oh, you couldn't do that, George. You don't know Paulette Goddard that well. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, Bill... Well, here's Dr. Lewis. Hope he isn't as absent-minded as he used to be. Come in. How do you do? Is this the residence of Dr. Lewis? Well, here we go again. <laughs> Look, uh, you're Dr. Lewis, and I asked you to come here. Oh, to be sure, to be sure. Yes. Well, I can see that an examination won't be necessary. <laughs> you're mistaken. That's all mistaken. Look, uh, Doc, all I want you to do I'm is... I'm sorry, but you're definitely not going to become a mother. Uh, better luck there. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Doctor, Good day. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Doc. Uh, no, I can't wait. I have an appointment with a man named Burns. He phoned and said that his wife's health was bad since he hit her with a club. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Lewis, you're just a little mixed up. This is Mr. Burns, and his health is bad because his wife's club holds its meetings here. Ah, I understand. My wife belongs to a club, too, and I often say to her, Catherine, uh, no, that's not her name. Isabel? No. Nancy? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, how about, how about Mrs. Lewis? I'd love to meet her. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. <laughs> Doctor, look. All you have to do is tell my friend's wife that he's sick. Ah, but is he? I have to be sure. A man in my profession can't afford to go off half a uh, uh, bake, a uh, shot, a uh, crack. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, you're a very nervous man, Mr. Sake. May I call you Pete? <laughs> Look, uh, doctor, I'm George Burns. Go right in there and tell my wife that those club meetings are ruining my health. Got it? Oh, sure. I never forget a face. Right this way, doc. Oh, Gracie, 
Gracie, a friend of yours would like to speak to you. Oh, hello, Dr. Lewis. I'm awfully glad to see you. I'm delighted to see you, too. Who are you? <laughs> well, I'm Mrs. Burns. Don't you remember? I introduced you to my girlfriend, Tootsie Sagwell, and you took her out. I did? Well, you didn't exactly take all of her out, just her tonsil. <laughs> Doc. Will you please tell her about Mr. Burns' health? Oh, to be sure. Mr. Health is proud of his Burns, and he should be. First degree, you know. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Lewis. Out, beat it. Scram, scram. Well, I'd like to, but I haven't time. I've got to go. <laughs> now, wait a minute, girl. What Dr. Lewis was trying to tell you is this. These club meetings of yours are ruining George's health. Why no? Well, it's true. Why, when I walked in here this morning, he was as sick as he could be. He looked up at me with that pitiful little face of his... And he said, water, water, bring me water. So I gave him water and a bar of swan, the new white floating soap. that's <laughs> purer than finest Castile's. I knew he'd want that. George knows that money can't buy a purer soap. Bill, are you serious? Is George really sick? Gracie, I don't want to frighten you, but poor old George is as weak as a little baby. Thank goodness you've got swan, because swan is great for babies. <laughs> it's so pure, it's mild, too, kind even to a little baby's tender skin. So you know it must be wonderful for anybody's hands and face, tub or shower. You just bathe him with Swan. He'll pull through. Oh, isn't this awful, girls? Oh, don't worry about it. Really, I never dreamed our club meetings were making George ill. Yes, Gracie. And it's high time you women considered George. Just as you've long considered Castile soaps the standard of purity. Of course, you know that Swan is even purer than finest Castile. Oh, all right, Bill. You don't have to say any more. Then, then you'll help him, Gracie? Well, of course I will. After all, I married George for better or for worse. It would be awful if he got any worries. Well, that's fine, Gracie. I'll, I'll go in and tell him he's as good as cured. Hey, George. Yeah? It's all set. Come on, upstairs. You mean it worked? Yeah, yeah, hurry. All you have to do is get into bed and act sick and no more club. Oh, great. Here, give me your robe. Okay. I'll get into bed. <coughs> oh, come on. Come on. Get out of my bed, you silly-looking duck. Out, out. <coughs> Oh, shut up. Now, remember, George, get a sad look on your face. We've got to make this good if we're going to fool Gracie into thinking you're sick. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Herman. Oh, <laughs> look. Uh, look, kid, it's, 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 it's sort of a game, that's all, a game. <laughs> quiet, quiet. For goodness sake, Herman, take it easy. Look. If you, if you keep your big fat bill shut about this, I'll give you a nice sardine. What do you say? Uh-uh. Uh, two sardines? Uh-uh. Oh, holding out, huh? Well, two sardines is as far as I'll go. Okay, okay, quiet, quiet, quiet. I'll give you the whole can. Now, go on. Beat it, you little blackmailer. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take that little duck... Hey, do I hear Gracie coming up the stairs? Yeah, I think so. Hurry, get sick. Groan. Oh. Oh, put something into it. You're supposed to be sick. Groan. Oh. George, is that the best you can do? Think of your income tax. Oh! <laughs> That's it. Now keep going. Oh! Oh, George, oh. George, darling. I heard you were terribly sick. Dying, maybe. So I rushed right up here the minute we finished discussing Mrs. Pomtag's new hairdo. Oh. Oh, thanks, dear. Oh! oh what's the matter, dear? Where have you got a pain? All over. Oh, dear. You couldn't have it in a worse place. <laughs> oh. oh! Stick out your tongue, George. Uh, oh, my goodness. No wonder you're sick with a thing like that in your mouth. <laughs> oh. Gracie, come on. You're holding up the meat. Yes, Gracie. Now, girl, please, please. My husband is desperately ill. How dare you think that I'd leave his side to go downstairs and attend a silly meeting? Oh. I love my husband, and I'm going to stay with him. Why, if anything happened to George and I wasn't here, I'd never forgive myself. Thank you, darling. So we'll hold our meeting right in this room. Oh, my no. God. No, 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 no,
Well, friends, George and Gracie will be back in a moment. So for just a few seconds, consider your two hands. Yes, I mean it. Your two hands, ladies, are two of the best possible reasons for using Swan soap in the dishpan and for any soap and water job. Swan is purer than finest Castiles. Swan is so mild, it actually helps protect your hands, helps keep them soft and lovely. Swan doesn't skimp you on suds, either. Tests show it gives twice as many suds in a minute as other white floating soaps. So why use strong soaps? Why spend money on easy-to-waste package soaps or costly toilet soaps? No need to when you can get Swan, the soap that's purer than finest Castile. And now here they are again, George and Gracie. George, you shouldn't say mean things about our club. The girls are very patriotic. They are, huh? Well, yes. Today at the meeting, I was supposed to serve them pancakes and butter. But they were so patriotic, they refused to touch a single pancake. All they ate was our butter. <laughs> our butter? Gracie, haven't you been reading the paper? You can't get that anymore. Oh, was it butter? We thought it was batter. Oh. <laughs> the makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your CBS station again next week, same time. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS, next Tuesday night. And don't forget to listen to Swan's other show, Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou, next Friday night over another network. And now, till next week at the same time, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles.